I'm Claudio Sanchez of Coheed and Cambria, and welcome to my episode of Riff Lords. Today, I'm going to show you uh, some of the riffs that I wrote, and hopefully you can take some of my approach and apply it to your creative songwriting. So the first song we're going to explore is a song called Dark Sentencer. Dark Sentencer is uh, one of the more progressive tunes that Coheed has uh, created, and so, uh, yeah, let's kind of dissect it. And now I'm going to play it half time so you get a better idea of what's what's happening. <laughs> And you can throw in a bunch of pitch harmonics if you like. I'm a sloppy guitar player, so I tend to do that. So it's a lot of uh... In creating the song, my approach, because it is the opening track of the band's last record, I thought to try to emulate something symphonic. I don't really know what that is, but this sounded right to me. So uh, it sort of starts, I at this area, and it does this like Black Sabbath paranoid sort of thing, right? So you're like, right? So that's like straight out of the Black Sabbath. And then it's like a minor dissension from that position. And then you ascend going down two frets. And then stick in the B area. That sort of um, is the punctuation of the statement, if that makes any sense. It's a lot of, uh, I, you know, it's a lot of um, anticipation in the picking hand. At least that's how I, that's the best way I think I can describe it. Like things aren't necessarily being hit. Like it's a lot of like what's happening up here with this finger in terms of the percussive stuff. So again, this, this sort of ring finger is hammering down on the fifth as you know, this hand is 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 off the off the guitar. So that's up down up down, in the descension. But then in the ascension at the A. So a lot of skipping is happening with this picking hand. So and then uh, now we're going back to the up down up down. Now I'm going to give it to you again at half speed one more time, and then we'll uh, we'll get back to full speed. speed. All right, so we're going to move on to another riff from the song. So Dark Sentencer, like I said earlier, is a pretty long tune. There's a lot of movements, and one that I think is kind of cool that I should show you is um, the riff uh, sort of coming out of the verse choruses. So. so anyway, that just kind of has like, to me, what sounds like a classical almost John Williams type vibe to it. I'll play it again uh, at speed and then I'll and I'll go uh, I'll go halftime for you. <laughs> 
this uh, position right here. So. It's a little like diminished arpeggio, like leaning. I, I like to do that a lot. So that that part for me just I, I tend to write like um, linearly might be the way I, I you know so I, I'll come up with a part and if the part before it sort of poses a question well then the part after it must answer it and then coming out of that we're all... like clearly impending doom right like something bad is about to happen. And that's what Dark Sentencer is. It's an establishing shot of the world the story takes place in. So that's really it. I mean, as far as like expressing the technical parts of it, I mean, again, I just, I kind of play by ear. Uh, it's, and that's, I guess that's just always how I've played. <laughs> stops and then we have a synth accompaniment that basically kind of drives us into the bulk of the song. So this is uh, that establishing riff at halftime. <laughs> of like skipping, a lot of open strings, things like that. And here it is now at full speed. <laughs> So the next uh, song I'm going to show you is called No World for Tomorrow. It's another opening track on a Coheed record, and it's actually tuned to drop D. <laughs> So a lot of um, kind of that same stuff, that open playing, like, uh, you know, hammering on, uh, stuttering with this sort of hand. Um, that's pretty much a thing that, that, I, that I see kind of happens a lot in Coheed. 
songs, certainly when I'm writing. It's just something that I like. And maybe it has a lot to do with, you know, singing the songs at the same time, like having those open voids to allow a vocal to insert. So um, that's, it just feels kind of right to me. Um, and again, it kind of plays off that like symphonic vibe um, that maybe you had, we had heard in the Dark Sentencer, you know, like, that minor, da 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 ba da 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 ba da ba da da go go da ga ga da ga da da ba da da, you know, like, um, so yeah, that's you know definitely a reoccurring theme in in the catalog. Um, so I'll, I'll try to explain <clears throat> a little of what's going on. Uh, so again, a lot of open playing. So you know, and the, and the D, the drop D sort of helps that. So we have. Uh, so if you can check that out. So the song starts, everything's pretty much open, and then the fingers kind of attack as the string rings out. lot to do with the noise that's kind of coming off of the board. You know, it's this very percussive, almost less clay pool-ish kind of thing. Like it's almost slapping, but not in this kind of way, you know? <laughs> That's definitely a reoccurring theme. A lot of like open stuff at the top of the phrase, hammer, hammer, if you will. And then emphasizing like the up, down, up, down to kind of solidify like the riff, like kind of anchor us back. Like, oh yeah, something's happening here. Everything feels tight and then open up again. So here's that, it's all open. And now we're up, down, up, down. So yeah, it's just about letting this guy kind of be almost like, I don't know, the conductor maybe? I, I'm not as exact. And again, I love like the noise that kind of comes off of the board. So the harder you can kind of slam down the note and the more like kind of crud that can come off the, the board, I think the better. And now let's uh, let's show you at full speed. <laughs> when I wrote this next this next piece, it, it actually it actually had a few pieces that kind of came along with it. Um, it's the later half of the band's second record, In Keeping Secrets. And it's called Fuel for the Feeding End. And, you know, I was just looking to do something that felt a little more like, and maybe, maybe it was like subconscious, but I tend to, I tend to like to play with like modular synths. At the time, I didn't really know what that was, but I always enjoyed like the idea of the sequence, like something like Pink Floyd's On the Run or things like that. And, um, Slowly, I think subconsciously, I started to put that into um, my approach to writing songs, and I think these are some of those songs that that start to show showcase that idea. Um, so, "Fuel for the Feeding End" is definitely more of a progressive uh, tune, um, and it and it plays a lot on what the drums are doing. Um, it's a very stop and go. So, so the pieces, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while. <laughs> So yeah, it's, 
it's just, it's four cycles. And then we repeat that, but in the last one, before we get into the next section, we just like, we play with that. So again, kind of playing with that idea of like Pink Floyd on the run. You know, that that sequence that just kind of loops over and over again. Let me show it to you, I guess, in, in halftime. <laughs> It's a lot of just single note. This is, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of striking. Instead of doing that sort of um, uh, open playing, we're definitely playing more like on the string in the first half of it. Oh, well, there, I guess there's a little opening when you kind of get to this E, A hammer on. So I guess it's a lot of one, a lot of uh, two strikes on each note, I guess. And then you get that little uh, power chord thing that kind of tightens it up. I think the, the most exciting part of the riff is that sort of ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da -da, you know, the, uh, the Pink Floyd on the run kind of thing. Um, and so it's again, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of the fingers being off the string um, that, that kind of get that to happen. So you're, so you see a lot of open. So I'm not even, I'm not even picking of just allowing the fingers to kind of do it, you know? So, you know, I think the faster you play it, the less you have to pick it, because uh, there's less, um, there's less space in between the notes. So, and think of like a train. Think of like you know, a, a, you know, just a, the train going down the tracks in like a cartoon or something. You know, that's kind of what it feels like to me. So let me try to play it really slow and speed it up. about the relationship between your two hands and, and trying to get them to sort of do the opposite. Almost like juggling, if that makes any sense. I mean, I, I, I've never called it that, but uh, maybe that makes sense to you uh, and helps. So here's feel for the feeding end at halftime. <laughs> Just another side note, there, there is some palm muting happening um, in the lower sort of section of, this, of the guitar. So 
So yeah, definitely kind of keep your palm down. So it keeps everything really like tight um, and you're not getting any of those uh, you know, little artifacts. I mean, like I said earlier, I'm a big fan of the artifacts, so throw them in there if you want to. All right, so the next song I'm gonna show you is a song called Everything Evil off the band's first record. And um, I think this is sort of where the open stuff starts to begin with, with the band. So this one goes a little something like this. <laughs> So yeah, and now at half speed, fingers crossed. just kind of starts, I, I tend to play with power chords a lot. Again, I'm like not really a, you know, a technically proficient like guitar player, like, you know, Metallica runs through this, this DNA. So it's like, you know, it's a lot of like, everything is kind of rooted in a power chord. So, um, so here we, here we go. It's like starts with this, like real big, you know, um, just to get the attention. Of, of the listener and then we start a snake we start we start to snake through the the parts again going back to another like sort of power chord situation so so yeah the power chords sort of anchor anchor the riff trying to do you know both a rhythm and a lead at the same time or you know hop back and forth between the two. Um, so yeah, and you know, again, like the, a lot of this like open playing is stemming from that power chord. So, so it's like a, I guess it's a B minor scale, like hopping around. So those little phrases in between the power chords, I like to call them cheating, because I'm really not playing what, you know, I'm, I'm just hopping around, you know, it's just cheating the riff, I guess. Um, and uh, again, allowing this hand to do some of the work, you know. Um, You know, and this guy is kind of skipping. He's not playing every note. You know, it's it's a lot of a lot of the character is in the open. You know, hammer on from this hand. Um. Like, let's see, let's try to focus on this hand and see how much it picks, because I don't even know. Right, it feels less than the notes that are actually being played. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The theme in Coheed's music is we tend to live in the world of three, four, six, eight. Not that we don't come out of it and, um, and live in 4-4, four, four. it's just for some reason I feel when writing songs like comfortable in that meter, maybe it's my brain's lopsided or something, it's just that feels, that feels way more normal to me most of the time than 4-4 four, four does. That's kind of where this song, excuse me, this kind of where this song uh, lives. All right, so I'm gonna give you Everything Evil again at halftime and then I'll speed it up. <laughs> So 
So the next one I'm gonna show you is a little more straightforward. Uh, it's from the band's second record. It's called The Favor House Atlantic. <laughs> So that's the opening riff to the song, um, you know, and then it kind of gets into like more of a just straight ahead power chord, pop kind of situation. Almost like kind of playing in the world of the police a little bit. Um, so, so yeah, so I'll show you the opening riff to that in uh, a little slower, so. The tag in that song in Faber House is, uh, or the hook, if you will, is this line that's, uh, it's called, good eye sniper, I'll shoot if you run. And the history of that line is, uh, you know, when the band was touring in, uh, in a van back in, I don't know, the early 2000s, our tour manager at the time was, you know, I was sitting in the passenger seat and we were looking for, I don't know, maybe a, some sort of department store or a guitar center or something like that. and. Uh, and I happened to pick it out. Um, like I saw it like from down the road and he was like, good eye, sniper. And he would hap happened to be a, you know, a vet. And, and so I just loved the line, the way he, sa he said it sounds so musical. And so I adopted it and put it in the song. Um, so yeah, that's just a little history about that line. Um, and uh, yeah, so, you know, again, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, like chord progression, you know, again, the band is very much heavily influenced by Sting and Police and, um, you know, and, and in a way it kind of feels like that a bit. So I'll show it to you again, uh, slow and then fast. <laughs> I like to shake the strings a bit. Again, I think it's, you know, for me, um, you know, maybe it's that idea of like, you know, doing more. Like there's a moment where, I, you know, I could just, I could just hold the note, but I choose to, to bring, you know, to bring a little uh, of flavor to it. And you could also pitch it, if, you know, pinch it if you want. Um, you know, it's just something I kind of pick up and, and just seem to like to do uh, when I can. Uh, you know, again, I think it just kind of adds a little flavor to it and doesn't make it feel so stiff. So um, the vibrato, I think, is, it has a lot to do with, with the wrist, forearm. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, just kind of a natural thing, you know, just shake it, shake it as much as you can. As far as the, pick, the pitch harmonic, it's really just kind of digging in there and getting your, um, your thumb to, to sort of mute the string when you come down on it. It's really just getting that, getting the skin to hit that, hit that string. And again, all in, for me, I, I believe it's the wrist and forearm. Um, you know, just, you just want to feel like you're hurting the thing. You want, you know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Like when you, when you, when you, when you hit down on the pick, You want it to sound like it's screaming, like you did something bad. Are you okay? Um, so, yeah.
All right, so the next song I'm going to show you is a song from the band's third record. Um, it's called The Suffering. And most of that record is actually tuned down a half step. The Suffering is pretty much like a straight ahead kind of rock song um, with like a bit of 50s flair, I think. Uh, again, we're kind of living in that world of the power chord, you know, slamming down on the at the top of, of the riff and then moving into more single note structure as the as the as it progresses so here you go <laughs> So yeah, so a lot of that has, um, there's a lot of sliding, you know, very slippery kind of uh, transitions between the chords. Um, so I think that's kind of important. It should have that kind of flair when, uh, when delivering it. But yeah, pretty, pretty st straightforward, you know, um, you know, in that more pop kind of vein of what Coheed does. Uh, so the top of the riff, we're starting with the power chord and we're sliding off of it. Um, and it's important, you know, to, to get that slide kind of in there. You know, you want it to feel a bit slippery. It's almost like, you know, um, that little riff that kind of follows the power chord almost sounds like there's like something wrong, if that makes any sense. Again, another slide, slide again. And feel free to slide all over the place, you know. Um, you know, I tend to do it when the power chords attack, but you know, if the mood takes you there, slip and slide, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, just slide around. It feels, it feels right to me, it feels, uh, it feels cooler. Um, so yeah. Um, there's also this moment at the back end of the progression where you do this like half time or half half step uh, slide up, you know, in this power chord section. The band is heavily influenced by the police. I mean, I grew up listening to Sting, um, you know, just his solo stuff uh, and you know, and, and the police, like that was like kind of a mainstay in the car with my dad. So it's definitely made its way into the songwriting, certainly with songs like A Favor House Atlantic and The Suffering that we're working on right now. Um, you, can, you can definitely hear a lot of that influence. Um, so, so yeah, so that, that's a little, little nod to the police. Um, again, the, the, the structure of the riff feels a little 50s to me um, in terms of like, you know, just the way things are phrased and the way it kind of moves around. Let's see, oh, there's also this moment in the riff where we kind of do that open thing, but not as, uh, as, not as like kind of intense as maybe some of the others we've showed you here in Riff Lords. Um, but uh, there's just that. little thing in there that helps us turn around into that like kind of police half step thing. All right, so I'm gonna give it to you one more time at half speed and then we're gonna speed it up, so. Also, thing just to note, like there's this weird like open section that sounds maybe a little like out of key, but I tend to like to do that too. So here it is, it's fast speed. <laughs>
Okay, so the next song I'm gonna show you is a, a fan favorite. It's called Welcome Home. It's off the band's third record. And when I wrote this piece, I happened to be in, living with my parents at the time. And I was in the kitchen and I was in my boxers working on this tune. And I remember getting the riff and being so excited about it. Like I was like kind of celebrating this like victory in, in the kitchen and my mother walks down and it was a pretty embarrassing moment. Um, so anyway, this is the riff. <laughs> It's uh, minor in that minor world. Um, there's a little sweep kind of situation that happens at the top of the riff. For me, again, it's a song that opens a record, so I wanted it to have that symphonic feel, like, oh, you know, here we are, we're establishing uh, a vibe, and the, we're establishing the concept of what this record is going to be. And it was a darker record for the band, so um, the song just sort of made made sense and opening it that way did for sure. So um, so yeah, I'll try to play it for you slow uh, and then I'll speed it up. But so again, we start with this like kind of sweep thing. I mean, I'm not much of a sweep picking guitar player, but it's a nice little like classical kind of vibe that happens at the top. So you're, you know, you're just kind of raking. come back down. So it's got that very classical Victorian, like I, like I know what I'm doing kind of thing. <laughs> and then you kind of, you know, punctuate the statement with almost like a staccato, like if it were strings, what would the strings be doing? So, hum, hum, ha. You know, again, really posing this question of what is coming. Uh, and then we answer it with even more of a question. So it kind of reminds me of like some like Disney, like Peter and the Wolf or something strange like that, if that makes any sense, you know, uh, like you're going into the dark. And that's pretty much it. That's all really kind of power chord open playing in that area. So your so your pinky's kind of coming up a half step to give it that like, you know, scary kind of quality. And then when you do the hunt dun 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 dun, it's pedaling against this open open D string. Right? And I also like to do this a lot. Um, when a chord is being sustained, I like, to, I like to shake the chord a little bit. It creates like more like anxiety, more like, uh, like I feel a bit uncomfortable. And then, and then the, riff in the in the verse just to throw it at you and 
that's just what I'm singing over. So just to kind of put it under the microscope a bit, uh, again, there is this like sort of sweep and there is some muting that's happening just to kind of help that ring out. <laughs> And you can, you know, with this sort of, you can pitch, uh, pinch harmonic that that last note if you want to punctuate it or you, or not. It really all depends on the mood. Um, you can do that. And it's just raking, you know. You're so you want to start with an open. Right? Um, so yeah, just a little bit of palm mute to kind of help make sure it rings. You want it to feel like, like subdued a bit, but in that it'll, it'll help it kind of poke out more. Um, and then the next section, you know, it is all like sort of downstroke to kind of help with the, help intensify that kind of doomish quality of the riff. <laughs> And again, you can shake that chord. You just want to make sure that this uh, E flat is coming first. That's what's going to help like establish that tension. Um, so. So I'm going to play Welcome Home for you slow, and then I'll speed it up. <laughs> I was younger, you know, I was always taught this idea of like, you need to learn how to read. And I just, I guess I just didn't have the patience for that. You know, I, you know, I just wanted to play, you know, I learned looking at fake books, you know, what are the chords? And that was pretty much more song than anything, you know, a taste of honey and songs like that. Like just things that, you know, just understanding song. And not, not that that's what I was like aiming for. I just wanted to learn how to play guitar and that's how I taught myself was with fake books, um, you know, but, you know, it's, I mean, I'm not discouraging anyone from learning the theory behind music. I think it's very important. It just didn't happen for me. Like, I, I think what's really important is having an imagination and like creating, like however you see fit, you know, I, I don't think you need to, uh, you need to learn all the rules to, to create. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, I'll show you my first song. Check it out. This is my first song. That's really my first, my first song. <laughs> it sounds like nothing else matters, I think, right? Isn't that? <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, like I, you know, it was like I had a guitar sitting in the closet, you know, and my dad had a guitar sitting in the closet. I was like, oh, I'm gonna play guitar, and there were reasons as to what instigated that, and I grabbed it, and that was the first thing that I came out, and I remember being so excited about that that I called my friend uh, who I wanted to start a band with, and I was like, check it out, I wrote our first song, you know, and that's that was it. That was, you know, that's how I started. I started writing songs, even as silly as that may have sounded, like that was what I wanted to do. And it didn't matter how I was gonna get there. Um, I was just gonna do it. And that's all you have to do. I mean, again, not discouraging you from, from learning the theoretical portions of music. I think that's very important. I just was impatient. Thanks for uh, watching my episode of Riff Lords. I hope you, you know, learn something from it, something you can take and apply to your own creativity. I mean, I feel a little exposed now, like I, I better figure something else out because all my tricks have been given to you and uh, I think I'm screwed. Uh, so, so anyway, yeah, um, thanks for watching and, you know, see you soon. <laughs>